The conflict between Israel and the Palestinian people is far from over, despite a ceasefire between Israel and Hamas. The Washington Post reports that Israeli police have arrested more than 2,100 people over the past few weeks. More than 91 percent of those arrested have been Arab, per the Haaretz newspaper. Arrests continue today with several people detained at the Damascus Gate in East Jerusalem while protesting the visit of a far-right Israeli politician. In videos taken by an activist, police appear to be detaining young adults. NBC News does not know what transpired directly before or after the incident. Palestinians have continued to protest Israeli settlers' attempt to evict Palestinians from their homes in Sheikh Jarrah, a neighborhood in predominantly Arab East Jerusalem. An outcome that's even more likely now that the Israeli attorney general said that he will not intervene in the case. On Sunday, 23-year-old activist Muna El-Kurd, whose family faces eviction, was handcuffed and taken from her home by Israeli officers. Reuters reports that without explicitly naming Muna, an Israeli police spokesman said police had arrested a 23-year-old resident of East Jerusalem under court order on suspicion of participating in riots. Muna's twin brother, Mohammed, later turned himself in at a police station after receiving a summons, and both were released hours later. I'm joined now by Mohammed El Kurd, who faces eviction and was recently arrested by Israeli police. And thank you for coming back on, um, Mohammed. We wanted to follow up with you. We know that you and your sister were arrested. What have you been charged with? Thank you, Joy, for having me again. Um, my sister and I were um, charged with inciting violence against police, which is also a baseless charge. I just want to take a second to correct a little bit of the information. The boy that was arrested in the video earlier is indeed a child. He's um, 16 years old. In fact, many of the 14 people that were arrested today at Damascus Gate by the Israeli occupation forces were children. And according to grassroots al-Quds, um, about 25 percent of the 2,000 plus Palestinians that were arrested were minors. And what are they what are they accusing them of? I mean, these are people who are marching in, in right in their own neighborhood, I'm assuming. Right. What are they accusing them of? Everybody's getting accused of the same thing, inciting violence against police. And of course, you know, Israeli police is, uh, has enough integrity for us to believe what it says about what these people are doing. But I want to I want to let the people know that the Damascus Gate, where people are getting arrested today and people are getting brutalized and sprayed with skunk water and tear gas, is one of the last remaining um, public spaces in which Palestinians can hang out. And as you see, it's becoming heavily militarized and we are facing a, a, a steady wave of police brutality for merely standing in there. Um, today, there were many far-right Israelis in Damascus Gate, and none of them were arrested. In fact, they could just gesture at Palestinians, and Palestinians could get picked up and thrown into a police car and taken into custody. I also want to point out the fact that many of the Palestinians arrested have reported being tortured inside these Israeli occupation um, detention facilities. Well, and I know that a, a, a lot of what is sort of captured, I think, for a lot of particularly younger Americans is this image that, you know, resonates with because we have Black Lives Matter as an issue here in terms of the way police behave. And so I think a lot of people are increasingly sensitive to the police behavior in other countries as well. Just some background for our audience who may not know about Sheikh Jarrah. Um, in 1876, this is some interesting history that my producers um, pulled forward. Palestinian landowners sold a plot of land to Jewish trusts. That is in 1876. In 1948, um, Jordan captured um, the plot in, in the Arab-Israeli war and built homes for Palestinian refugees who had fled Israel. In 1967, Israel captured East Jerusalem and returned land to the Jewish trust, who later sold it to right-wing settlers. But there is this issue that Jewish people are allowed to, to try to reclaim property under that, that, that they may have owned before 1948, between 1876 and 1948. The Palestinian families don't have that same right. Is that part of the issue here? The Palestinian families essentially have lived with very different rights in terms of being able to reclaim property. Well, two things. Yes, indeed, the, the Israeli judicial system is one that is asymmetrical and racist to Palestinians. Um, if Palestinians were allowed to reclaim their lands, there would practically not be many Israelis in this country. If my grandmother was allowed to go back to her to her um, home from which she was expelled in 1948, if every Palestinian refugee family was allowed back their land. But the other issue is that these claims, the idea that these lands were bought by um, Jewish people in the 1800s, 
are also baseless. The difference is that we are not allowed to present our own ownership documents within Israeli occupation courts, right? So settlers can just bring in their documents and the judges will take them as face value. Yet we have been asking for decades and decades and decades, asking the judge to open the file of the land ownership and look into who owns the land. And the judges have refused repeatedly. Um, this is not... Uh, a flaw in the system. This is the default. This is a system that was established by settlers to help settlers. This is a system that has favored settlements and colonialism. 94% of building permit applications submitted by Palestinians get rejected. The same person that works in the Jerusalem City Council that rejects these building permits is the same person that comes to my neighborhood and vandalizes the murals that say, welcome to Sheikh Jarrah with spray paint and Facebook lives it to his followers. So the, the system is complicit in this. It's not just about who owned lands, it's about who gets to claim lands and it's about who gets to prove their ownership of land. It's about who gets to have a fair trial and Palestinians will never receive justice from Israeli courts because they are inherently colonial. colonial. They're inherently anti-Palestinian. Let me, let me play, I don't know if we have time, but let me, let's very quickly play a video. This is um, from May of a young, of a woman and a man who are discussing this very thing. Take a listen. You are stealing my house. And if I don't steal it, someone else is going to steal it. No, no one, no one uh, is allowed to steal it. Jacob, you know this is not your house. Yes, but if I go, you don't go back. So what's the problem? Why are you yelling at me? I didn't do this. I didn't do this. But you, it's you, easy to yell at me, but I didn't do this. Yeah, you are helping. stealing my house. Do you expect things to change with the new administration if it turns over? Absolutely not. I think there is an abundance of evidence against Israel's abuses, Israel's yeah. apartheid regime, settler colonial regime. And I think it's time for the world to stop giving Israel impunity and hold it accountable for its crimes against Palestinians yeah. and for its theft of land and massacres.